Hello and welcome everyone to my Excess Tutorials. This is Lesson 7 and the first of the statistics lessons. I'm going to talk today about using the one sample t-test. In case you're not aware of it, SAS has a really nice procedure called PROC t-test that uh, allows you to do many of the t-test procedures that you use in statistics. So uh, one sample t-test is the one that basically is used to compare a sample mean to a given value. So if you're looking at, let's say, height and you wanted to see if the height of all of your uh, or a sample of some population were higher, lower, or different than some specified value, like let's say 5.3, then you could uh, test that using this procedure. So the t-test procedure is actually really simple to use. I'm going to actually use the um, example data that is provided by SAS in their help and documentation. So to uh, find the help and documentation, again, you just push F1 and I go to this search function over here and I type t-test and I scroll down until I find this line the t-test procedure the t-test procedure and you can see it gives you a very nice uh, description of the t-test procedure with a very nice example on how to use it so in this case they give you a data set called time and it represents the number of days I believe of a court case or a certain type of court case um, and here so 43 would be the number of days of one court case and 90 would be the number of days of another court case and it's going to test whether or not the mean value of um, court case days is greater than or equal to 80 so let's jump into the code itself here I've uh, just copied it and pasted it and now it's a slightly larger font size so you can read it better and I've taken that first line from the SAS manual to show you that this is going to test whether or not the mean length of a certain type of court case is more than 80 days. And see here they've got 20 randomly chosen cases and they're going to ask themselves is the mean length greater than 80 days. So the first thing I like to do is always to uh, run proc print on the data set so I can see what does the data look like. If I do that I can see here we've got 1 through 20 observations and here are all the uh, length of days of that court case. The next thing you want to ask yourself, and we're going to jump straight into the t-test procedure here, and I'm going to start first off with showing also that, uh, show how to use the t-test procedure without graphic options. The graphic options are used later to test uh, the normality assumption, and I'll talk a little bit about that as well. Now the first thing when you're doing any t-test is to ask yourself, what is the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is basically saying that the mean length is not different from some time. In other words, you're saying you want to be very objective and you want to say that in this case mean length of cases is equal to 80 days. Oftentimes when you see a null hypothesis it's written as h uh, subscript 0 equals some time or some value and we're trying to say that if this is the case, if we do not reject this null hypothesis then in the overall sample the mean is about 80 days. Well that being said the null hypothesis is always paired up with the alternative hypothesis. So we're going to ask ourselves now what is the alternative hypothesis h sub 1 or h sub a? That's the way it's mostly written in statistics. In this case the alternative hypothesis is that the mean length of cases is greater than 80 days and I'll show you the code for that in a second. Uh, when we're saying that something is greater than, we're going to specify uh, a option in the code that says exactly that. So if we wanted to test the alternative hypothesis that the mean was simply different, we'd specify a different code, size equals 2. So uh, one other thing I'm going to talk about is the level of significance. This is usually called the alpha value. The level of significance um, roughly is a uh, percentage in which case the result that you find in your observed uh, statistics did not occur by chance. Uh, it's actually a lot more complicated than that but it simply comes down to this idea of chance and you want to say that the results you're seeing weren't due to chance. The flip side of it is called confidence. In other words you can be so much percent confident that the results you have did not occur by chance. And um, most people use a alpha value of 5%, 0 0.05, but in common practice, uh, or what's used in common practice doesn't necessarily mean it's a gold standard. So 
don't always use 5%. I mean, you can go as high as, let's say, 10%, 15%. I mean, some people do that. It's just that 5% was specified by um, the scientist who first talked about, I think, uh, hypothesis testing a little way back when. I want to say it's Pearson, but I'm not sure. Um, but it's just a historical thing. So most people use an alpha value of 5% because of history, not because it has some mathematical um, reason that it's the, the better choice. So that being said, let's uh, show the t-test procedure and it's here. So proc t-test is very simple. Uh, of course, as I've taught, always specify the data set you're working on. Then you're going to specify what the null hypothesis is. So here in this case, the null hypothesis is that our court cases are 80 days. The mean of those court cases is 80 days. This sides equals u is talking about the alternative hypothesis. Here we're saying that the side is the upper side of the distribution, or the alternative hypothesis is that the mean length of court cases is greater than our null hypothesis of 80 days. And the last thing is this alpha equals, and this is our level of significance. And I've here specified 5% with 0.05. Um, one other thing you need to specify is which variable you're testing. So here, because it's a one sample t-test, we only include one variable, and that's this time variable. When we run this, here's what we see. And let me zoom in here for you guys. We see the n, or the sample size, of 20 cases. We see the sample distribution mean, which was 89.85 days. And you can see the level of precision goes up to four decimal places, and it's very common for SAS to do that. But if you're going to report this in your own research and you're using only 20 cases, it's better to keep your significant figures lower. So you might want to round this to the first decimal, so 89.9. Uh, the standard deviation, the standard error, the minimum and maximum values are provided. Then there's this other mean with a 95% confidence limit. And this 95% confidence limit is uh, calculated because we said that our level of significance was 5%. If we had specified 10%, like the example that SAS gives you, then it would have uh, calculated a 90% confidence limit. So just keep that in mind. Now I want to call your attention to one last thing, and that's this actual part down here in the very bottom. This is probably the most important part. This is the whole reason we're doing the t-test procedure. The t-value is the actual test statistic value. Uh, by itself, it doesn't really mean too much. You have to compare it to a... Um, table of values that are based on the degrees of freedom. And the t-value uh, just tells you, uh, in the overall context of the t-test statistic, what does the probability come down to, the p-value. So the p-value here is 0 0.0164. Now, as you can see, this value is less than 0 0.05. So what is the actual conclusion that you would draw from this? The conclusion that you would draw is that because this value, this p-value, is less than our alpha value of 0 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis. So remember, what was our null hypothesis? Our null hypothesis was that the mean length of cases is equal to 80 days. If we reject it, then we go with our alternative, which is the mean length of cases is greater than 80 days. Now, what would have happened if we didn't specify that we wanted it to be uh, greater than, we wanted to say less than? In this case, we would just change the sides to equal L for less than and run this all over again. The p-value is 0.9836. This is a highly non-significant finding, which means that we would fail to reject the null hypothesis because we are saying that... Um, the alternative basically was not true. So the alternative says that, what did we say? We changed it to less than. So the mean length of uh, court case days is not less than 80 days. It's definitely greater. The third way of looking that, at this is to uh, say that it's just simply different. And this is kind of the cop-out, most generally used alternative hypothesis. Uh, I say it has the least meaning, but it's saying that we're saying the alternative hypothesis is not 80 days. So if the null is that it's equal to 80 days, using a two-sided alternative is just saying it's not 80 days. And if we run that, then we can say, yeah, that's true. 
we can see that the p-value is uh, a significant one because it's less than our alpha level and therefore we would uh, reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the data or the data mean is definitely different than 80 days. Now the t-test procedure has one caveat, 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 how does that word go? Anyway, it's it's based on an assumption that the data is normally distributed. Well, what does a, a normally distributed data set mean? Well, most statistics can be classified as either parametric or non-parametric. Parametric statistics have the inherent assumption that the data is normally distributed. Normally distributed data roughly means that the data fall into a pattern if you measure it often enough. And that pattern is generally that bell-shaped curve that your statistics professors will all tell you about. Uh, one thing you can do is to test that. Um, if you want to test it visually, you can look at the histogram of the data and see does the data look roughly bell-shaped. Another way you can do it is using this QQ plot. And I'll show you in a second what a QQ plot looks like and kind of explain how it works. Um, however, if it's not immediately obvious visually that the data is normally distributed, then you can numerically calculate a uh, test statistic called the Anderson-Darling test statistic uh, to actually formally test the null hypothesis that the data is normally distributed. So here is um, the graphical code you would use on the PROCT test. And you can see here I've added this ODS graphics on and ODS graphics off on the borders of this uh, PROC step. I've also added this plots parentheses show h0 uh, close parentheses line. And this option basically says that we want to we want to test the null hypothesis of or we want to see the normal distribution. So if I run this, and you can see here on the um, results window, there are now two added lines, this summary panel and this QQ plot. If I double click on it, you can see what the uh, histogram looks like. And you can see this blue line that represents what the normal distribution would have been. And you can see a uh, red line for a kernel distribution. So don't worry too much about the kernel distribution, but more so look at this normal distribution line. And if your data set pretty much looks like that, you can kind of assume that your data is normally distributed. But the thing is, you can't just go with that. You can't just say, OK, well, it looks normal, so we're good to go. You want to also use a QQ plot. The QQ plot basically shows you shows you a line through your data and the actual data points. So if you look at the data points and they seem to fall along that line, you should be good to go. However, you can tell just looking at it, there's these points out here on the side and a couple of them above. So they seem to very uh, slightly go off balance. And that usually happens at the ends of the at the ends of this line because you have more noise. So because it's not immediately obvious, we can use our formal test statistic, the Anderson-Darling test statistic, uh, to numerically calculate a p-value that says this data is or is not normally distributed. Now the Anderson-Darling test, as most uh, tests for the normality distribution assumption go, have this null hypothesis that, in layman's terms, I mean, I'm kind of simplifying the theory here, the null hypothesis that the data is normally distributed. Proc um is very simple to use. Uh, you do it on a single value variable because it's a univariate test statistic. And you specify this histogram slash normal to get the uh, formal test for normality. So if I run this, I'm going to have a lot of information up top here. But I don't want to worry too much about this. I really want to go zoom in to this histogram and then this normal fit line and goodness of fit. And here we have goodness of fit test for normal distribution. This is basically saying, does the data fall into a normally distributed data uh, distribution? And so there's three tests that they calculate for you. They all have basically the same null hypothesis, which is that the data is normally distributed. And um, you can look up the theory on each of them. They're all kind of different. But the Anderson-Darling one is generally the one that's easiest and uh, more robust. And so you're going to go with that in this case. 
And here we can see that the p-value is greater than 0 0.250. So what does that mean? If it's not less than 0 0.05, remember, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So if the null hypothesis is that the data is normally distributed, then we fail to reject that so we can be uh, sure that the data is good to go. So we were uh, okay in using the t-test. So that's pretty much it for the one sample t-test. Uh, next time I'll talk about paired t-tests and two sample t-tests and uh, show you how to use the t-test for those cases. All right, thank you and have a good day.